Hey, Sir Stillwater here. Real quick video here to show how to convert some of these forge point bar forge points into banked forge points, as well as picking up some blueprints and metals to boot. Okay, let's get started. So you see here, I've got my little village. Um, I just leveled my, or I just placed my oracle, which gave me the 20 reward. And then it says here, contribute 20 points and I can get another blueprint for something else. Normally, what a lot of people will do is they'll put that 20 right on their oracle, take it to level 1, and then call it a day. I don't do that. I like to take and leave that sitting there as a level 0, and I'll show that in just a second. But first off, now I've got my 20, plus I had 3 that I either already had or I picked up from uh, uh, just randomly. Uh, but either way, I've got 23 to spend, so let's go look for some bargains. So I'm going to go over to my neighborhood. This is my preferred method. I already did a little bit of scouting ahead of this video being recorded, but I went ahead and I looked at the largest person in my neighborhood, this Dabinobio, or however it's pronounced. I go ahead and I look at their great buildings. In this case, I see they've got a 34 out of 60 placed on their Oracle, the level two. Let's open that up. Okay, so we see that nobody else has contributed, so position one is open. It pays 15. So let's do our math here. We're gonna go 60 minus 34 which is going to give us, what's that going to give us? That's going to give us 26. Divide that by 2, which is going to give us 13. If I contribute 13, I'm going to lock position 1, which means I'm going to make a profit of 2 whenever they level that great building. I won't get it immediately, but that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and say, what did I say it was going to be? 13? Okay, so I go ahead and first take it. Okay, here it's telling me the first time I'm using forge points on a great building. So forge points are first taken from the forge point bar, which is up here, and then if it needs any more, it'll reach into my inventory to get those. So that's fine. Good. So you now see 47. If somebody contributes the, the remainder, the 13, the best they're going to do is come in position 2 and get 10 forge points. But in this case, I'm going to get 15 forge points, 33 metals, and a blueprint when this levels. Okay, it's, so my, my forge points are tied up. A very important note is those 15 forge points, when they come in, they're going to go into my inventory, not into my forge point bar. That is very important because once you hit 10 total or above in your forge point bar, you no longer pick up your one per hour. So we know that that one was good. We can put a good lock on that. You have to be cautious because sometimes if you contribute and you don't have it all the way locked, somebody come in and snipe you, meaning that they come in just over you and you're kind of locked out and you may not be able to uh, have a chance to keep that position that you were in. You end up at the lower position. In this case, I've got 10. Let's say I contributed 12. Somebody came in, contributed 13. I wouldn't have enough room to do a catch up and I'd be stuck in position two. So I would roll and get my 10. I would have lost three forge points, uh, theoretically. Let's see, I notice I've got one other person out here that uh, I want to look at in my neighborhood that has some. I'm going to go to the other end of the range. You notice here, I went to, uh, the end, so these are all the small players. Um, I kind of pre-scouted because I didn't want to be diligent on how I spend these forge points. So I'm going to go up here. I'm looking for, uh, let's see. See, a lot of people don't have uh, great buildings yet because it's still pretty right here. So I don't even show mine on there yet. I just placed mine a couple minutes ago. And let's see. Annie, let's see how Annie's doing. Annie's 26. Same thing. Now look at that. Okay, so 26 out of 40. Position one's already taken. Position two is open, but it only pays five. So that wouldn't be worth my while, right? Because if I'm going to do a five, even if I put a five, I'm still not securing that position because that would be 31. Somebody could come in with six. They could take that position you know, from me, and then I'm kind of out of luck. I would get pushed down here, and I wouldn't get anything. So I'm going to go ahead and pass in this case. I hope that made sense. If there's any questions on that, go ahead and leave the comments down below. Um, if you want me to explain this better, let me know. And there's one other one other I noticed earlier that I wanted to take a look at here. And here, this Evil Over Chicken. It's kind of an interesting name. And they're 33 out of 60. They have a level 2 Oracle. Let's see where they're at. Only contributor on their grade building. And it pays 15. Now, the problem I have here is that's, what, 17? No, that's 27. 27 divided by 2. Let's do the math here. So I'm going to need, what, 13 or 14 to secure that. I don't have that. I only have 10. 
but I'm going to go ahead and take a look in this case, in this particular scenario, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the lower level uh, member of the neighborhood. Uh, let's look at the history contributions on this. I see that they were their primary contributor on their last level. The person came in before that, came in, made a little bit of profit with eight contributed for a 10 reward. They've only had two contributors. I'm going to go ahead and take a gamble on this one and go ahead and contribute my 10. I can always circle back if I need to, um, or if I want to, to go ahead and contribute some more because I've got some room. Um, right now, if this position holds, I will make a profit of five. Um, or I can come back and contribute, let's say, three more and make a profit of two. Those are big profits, but a profit's a profit. And actually, equally as important is the fact that it's going to convert those forge points from your forge point bars, now my clock's running again, into forge points in your inventory. So that's that's really valuable, and having that having that having those forge points in the bank are really handy to have. Okay, so that said, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up on this video, keep this one short. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about these, you know, the, talk about these forge points. I can buy forge points to fill the gap. I don't want to do that in this instance. Um, you see, I did contribute my, in this case, it's kind of a neat little bonus here. I contributed my 20 to other great buildings, so I didn't waste them on my own where I got nothing gained outside of getting my own building up. Uh, but I get to go ahead and collect the blueprint, and I happen to get a Coliseum blueprint. So now I've got three of the nine squares for a Coliseum. And look, I also, apparently I scouted my province. I go and collect that. Okay. Might as well just come do a couple of these while I'm here, right? A little bonus. Okay, good. So there we go. That's all I've got here in this video. I will go ahead and uh, circle back. I'm going to circle back and talk about this oracle and getting this oracle up to level one. And I know uh, in some of my comments, somebody had made a uh, suggestion to make a video talking about the uh, sticks to bricks thread. So I will go ahead and make that video next and uh, keep an eye for that. So if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please leave them below. Appreciate your time. Have a great day.